Soon-to-be sophomore Jonathan Kaminga was just labeled as a head case by the NBA's most popular analyst. The product of the G League Ignite has ridiculous potential, but given he's still 19 years of age, you have to expect Kaminga to have some ups and downs. There's going to be turbulence in any young player's development, but does the narrative being spewed about John having a lack of focus off the court have any validity to it? Meanwhile, fans on Twitter continue to make it a common narrative that LeBron James is in a completely different stratosphere than Stephen Curry. Is that legit? And which Golden State Warrior supporting cast member is Curry's biggest supporter? Stay tuned for the details on all that and more. Before continuing, just 8.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe. Also, please leave a thumbs up on this video. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. And click the link in the description down below to go follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter. Kaminga's known for his rare combination of athleticism and agility for a player who's six foot seven inches tall. What's not brought up with the kid is how he transitions to his dunks using a number of different weapons. Whether it's off-ball cutting, savvy footwork in the post, or relentless attacks off the dribble after showing off his underrated handle, John's long strides allow him to swiftly make up ground and lead to devastating posters. Combine that with the decent shooting chops Kaminga displayed in his rookie year, and soon enough, defenders will be forced to pick their poison. Albeit on limited volume, Kaminga shot 40% from 10 to 16 feet and 34% from beyond the arc. That three-point percentage raised to 36% on spot-up jumpers. However, off the dribble, John's mere 27.6% mark from deep and measly 18.8% mark on all pull-up jump shots leaves a lot to be desired. His shooting consistency has a long way to go before he's considered a stable floor spacer by the opposing defense. That said, the reps he got in during this year's summer league should be beneficial to his development Kaminga averaged 17.4 points per game on under 40% from the field and under 30% from deep in the summer league. Rough efficiency, but if you watch the games down in Vegas, you could tell the fundamentals in his off-the-dribble shooting looked improved. However, there were questions about Kaminga's commitment to being with the Warriors' summer league team in the first place, given he felt like he earned time off after at one point working himself into the rotation during his rookie campaign. It's Kaminga not seeming mentally engaged during the Summer League, which is probably why Stephen A. Smith said on ESPN's first take yesterday, quote, I'm worried about Kaminga. I'm hearing too many things about him off the court in terms of his head, the level of discipline that he lacks, some of the foolishness. I'm not getting in his personal business. I'm talking attitude. I'm not talking actions. I'm talking that attitude, the level of focus, commitment, determination, just putting your head down and doing the work. I'm hearing that he's shortchanging the Warriors in that regard, and he gotta get his act together." End quote. Obviously, Kaminga's blessed to have the gravity drawing of Stephen Curry, the floor spacing of Klay Thompson, and the passing-slash-defensive chops of Draymond Green next to him in Golden State. But with all the depth the Warriors had last season in addition to their big three, that made it an insurmountable task for a not-even 20-year-old to maintain his spot in Steve Kerr's consistent rotation. Don't forget, Kaminga was the 7th overall pick in 2021's draft. The man proved himself as a special prospect in his lone season with the G League Ignite. Having to earn his place in the rotation is something almost no player selected as highly as Kaminga in their respective draft would have to endure. That's why spouting as Stephen A's been made famous for saying blasphemous narratives about Kaminga's heart is uncalled for. Instead, let's cut the kids some slack considering he was a voice in the locker room for a championship team in 2022. Most 19-year-olds with Jonathan's talent would have stirred up drama in the locker room after losing their spot in the rotation in the playoffs like Kaminga did. Now on to a breakdown of another narrative, this time revolving around Steph. Trending tweets with unanimous agreement in the reply section state LeBron James doesn't merely have a better career resume than Steph, but it's not even close between the two. Don't get me wrong, LeBron's the most dominant player of this generation, but the fact that Curry's six foot three and in the same sentence should be appreciated more. Tweets like the ones on your screen claiming it's not even close between he and Braun imply that LeBron fans think it's closer than they say. 
Very few mention the fact that a year before Kevin Durant joined when Steph Curry won unanimous MVP and became the only player to average 30 points per game in a 50-40-90 season, the Warriors passed the 95-96 MJ-led Chicago Bulls in single season wins with 73 Ws. Steph was one 3-1 to -one series lead away from back-to-back -back titles, all without the man who many call better than him in KD. But LeBron leading the Cavs out of that 3-1 hole made LBJ an untouchable goat in the eyes of many. More so, it made fans across the globe, ranging from diehards to casuals, discredit Stephen Curry. When Durant hopped on, people assumed Curry had recruited him there and needed the help. As it's been proven to us via KD ruining the offseason with his trade demand, and via Curry celebrating a chip with his patented night-night celly, Steph's always been the most important player on the dubs. Another thing that's been proven to us is that Curry never recruited Durant, KD's nickname the snake for a reason, that continues to be obvious in Brooklyn. Shifting focus, I have no problem with Draymond supporting LeBron's legacy. I've explained in prior videos why I think people trying to stir up drama between Dre and Steph is kind of pathetic. Having said that, when it comes to supporting the legacy of Stephen Curry, Andre Iguodala is the top guy when it comes to that. Iggy's been a class act since the media disrespectfully voted for him to be 2015 Finals MVP over Curry. Other than getting that award, the attention for Iggy's been few and far between, but it's hard to imagine where the Warriors would be without him since he was acquired back in 2013's offseason. The question we're all begging to know regarding Andre is whether or not he's returning for another season in 2022-23, given he's a candidate for retirement at age 38. Coach Kerr had this to say about whether or not Iggy's returning, saying, quote, I leave Andre alone. He knows where we stand. If he wants to come back, we'd love to have him. The one thing we feel strongly about with Andre is we want to give him whatever space and time he needs to make a decision. I'm leaving him alone. Whenever he makes his decision is fine with us, end quote. Andre's mentorship of Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga was massive this season, as there were clips of Iggy acting as a second coach on the sidelines. Of course, it's all going to come down to how Iguodala's body can withstand the daily grind of an 82-game season, but given his acquisition nine years ago has kept the rivalry healthy between Draymond and Steph, which garners Golden State's system the best possible result, Iguodala's voice in the locker room is an essential factor. For being Stephen Curry's true right-hand man, Andre deserved some love in today's video, and whether he retires or not, he's had a massive impact on the Dubs dynasty. But today's shout-out question is, was Stephen A right to call out Jonathan Kaminga? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout-out, and the top 5 commenters by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, which new Laker are you most excited to see in 2022-23? Boston Haltane says, I'm excited to see how Thomas Bryant fits in alongside Anthony Davis in the front court. Although he's been limited to only 37 games over the last two years, he's still only 25 and has time to improve his game. Bryant is an improving screen setter and has shown that he can be a floor spacer despite his down shooting splits from deep last season. He's going to be a secondary role guy for LeBron behind AD. You tell the story and community speaks, so leave your take on today's question.